Welcome to the Revival Center of Paso Robles. We're glad you're here. Our prayer is that you'll be blessed and edified by this message and to be encouraged to live out the full potential of your faith. We are located at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California, and we invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. To learn more about who we are and what we believe, please visit us at alphabeth.org. Now, please open your Bible as Pastor Gabe begins teaching today's Word. We are so blessed at the Revival Center that we are, we're surrounded by wonderful teachers, wonderful preachers in the house of God. Amen. And uh, well, we're honored, you know. Um, you know, I was thinking, I was praying this afternoon, I want to tell you, we'd love for you to be a part of what I call the Revival Center experience. Amen. Because I believe, I believe that the Lord is getting ready to create an experience around here. Can someone say amen? Amen. And God is going to create an experience that, I mean, a place that their lives are going to change. And I believe a lot of that is going to happen here tonight. Glory to God. We are so blessed here at the Revival Center to have part of our church family. A tremendous, tremendous woman of God. Uh, she is a lieutenant colonel in, in the armed forces. She is a ordained minister. She's an author. She's a motivational speaker. She's an entrepreneur. She is an attorney. Amen. I mean, you know, so we're blessed tonight. So you're watching this. You are getting ready to get blessed because the, the, the word spoken out of our mouth is going to speak into your heart. So I want you in this room, as well as on my way of video, put your hands together. I want you to welcome the, this wonderful woman of God, Charmaine Singleton. God bless you. All right, can everybody hear me? Yes. All right, I know I'm dressed a little bit differently, and I already asked Pastor if I can do um, something different. <sighs> so, yes, I know I'm dressed differently, and it's going to be Christmas right now. All right, it's Christmas right now. And yes, that's right, we're going to have some gifts. Um, and it's so ironic that Dr. Kaluba was here in November, and he talked about um, exploits. Yes. And then different things happened within the church body, and it felt like different things were going on. And then for New Year's, um, we had someone come in here and prophesize, right? Yes. And, but have we seen the fruits of that prophecy yet? Not yet. So I said, Lord, what is going on? Um, and then he brought back to my remembrance after I spoke in November, I sat back in the last row because basically I really didn't want to speak here. I came here as I realized to be ministered to, not to minister to other people. But I said to God, and Pastor does not know this, if I am supposed to speak to his people again next, give me something for them to uh, receive. Amen. So I didn't ask Pastor to speak. He asked me to speak, and yes. I'm just saying that in a humble way. And so I said, Lord, uh, you haven't given me anything, so it's not my time to speak. So I just started believing God for words of revelation. Hallelujah. And so um, on Monday night, I went into deep prayer and fasting, and I was trying to get um, ready for this word. And um, I went to sleep early after I was um, um, reading and ministering and everything like that. And I went to sleep early, and I woke up, and it was... 11.42, I turned over because I forgot to set the alarm, and I saw a message from Pastor that he wanted my bio. And I said, okay, so I, I saw 11.42. From 11.42 to 1.39 in the morning, God downloaded different things into my spirit. Praise God. So, Miss Bonnie, God told me to tell you to rest. He told me specifically that you are a virtuous woman. He told me to tell you that you think that you are dead or something that you want to do is dead. He told me to tell you, don't worry about death, because in death there is life. And how he broke it down to me was, when we're dead, we are still. However, our spiritual body is activated. Then he showed me Lazarus. Lazarus was in a tomb. He was dead. But the only thing Jesus said was, come forth. He had to hear that in order to come forth. 
So you need to be still so he can talk to you. There's something that you want to do. God already has the design and everything worked mm -hmm. out for you. Mm -hmm. Just listen to him yeah. with your spiritual yeah. ears, and yeah. it's going to happen. Oh, All right. Oh. My sister. That's why I had to get your name, guys, today. You're beautiful. Sometimes you think that you're overlooked, but you're not. God remembers you. He sees you. He sees everything that you do. And he hasn't forsaken you. You are an important part of this church family. Know that you're worthy. Know that you're loved. And know, importantly, that God loves you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Grandma, your life has been extended. That's all I have to say. Your life has been extended. Glory. Your life has Glory. been extended. Glory. Mama, Rabbi Shabbat. you're healed. Oh. You are healed. Yes, Lord. You are healed. Yes, Lord. You're healed. Yes, Lord. You're healed. Yes, Lord. Sarah Kate. Jesus. Jesus. I don't know what this means, but there's restoration. There's restoration for you and your family. Restoration in your house. There is peace, love, and joy. Amen. Dante, don't let anyone tell you that you're not worthy. Don't let anyone tell you or put a label on you. You have no label, only the label that God gives to you. Mr. Luke, yes, your walls are coming down. Your walls are coming down. You are a minister and you just don't know it. Your walls are coming down. Answer the calling on your life. I love you. And God loves you. God loves you. Speedy healing, speedy healing, speedy healing, just believe it, okay, that's what God says, no more pain, no more suffering, just speedy healing, okay, yes, there's some others, but God told me I have to tell them in secret, there's one more, and I saved the last one, and it's for pastor, and I don't know whether or not this is something that he's been seeing, dreaming, driving by, or anything like that. But it's a white building. God says it is yours. Just ask and you shall receive. The keys are already have your name on it. Amen. 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 And that's what God put into my spirit. Um, and we, I was just talking to him, and not only for this church, but it's also for this community. Um, what I saw also, which was amazing, we have angels guarding this building. And I don't know if y'all seen that before, oh, yes, but yes. he showed them to me. Uh -huh. And they have swords, oh. all right? They have swords, and they are protecting this building, all right? So you have angels dispatched here fighting for this building, fighting for this community, fighting for everybody that's yes, in here, yes, all right? And the harvest is about to happen. Oh, the hallelujah. harvest is about to happen. Yes. So that's what God told me, and I just had to be obedient. And I know some of this stuff is true because he gave me words for other people that's outside of this flock, outside of the state. And I talked to them, and things have already started to happen. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to get into the word. Let's see if I can actually, and you have to bear with me, and somebody tell me if I go over time or anything, but I'm not trying to preach by time. Um, 
it's been really difficult the last couple of days as well. And also, um, my contact is not in the right place. So, <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. We just thank you that you're the great I am. Now, God, I ask you to hide me behind the rugged cross, Lord Jesus. I ask you to stand up in me right now, Lord Jesus, that they may not see me but you. That thus that says the Lord that I speak, that it falls on good ground and it manifests that we yes. see it and give you all the glory, yes. all the honor, yes. and all the praise. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. amen. All right. So, now, I didn't realize that I actually still kind of matched because I really wasn't trying to, but it's hard for a person like me. But the title today, what God um, placed into my spirit is, Are You a Fool for God? Are you a fool for God? Because you see, when I talk to God, we have some issues, all right? You know, I'm like, God, you promised me, what's up? What's going on? You told me this and this was going to happen. People prophesied to me, for me, through me, upon me, anointed me, and nothing has happened. What is going on? You bless Ad, you bless Joe, you bless this person and that person, you know? And I'm not jealous, but what about me? What about me? You know, and I believe that back in the day that our brothers and sisters in Christ felt the same way. You know, they didn't understand this thing called being a Christian. And sometimes being a Christian is acting like a fool. All right. That means that when God says and tells you to do something, you have to do it. When he tells you to lay hands, you have to do it. And you're waiting for it to happen, and you're like, what just happened? It didn't happen, but you told me to do it, so now I look like a fool. Right? I mean, I'm just saying, okay? And after a while, you get discouraged, and it's to the point that you almost want to throw in the towel because I'm going to tell you back in the day when I was doing my own thing and just kicking it I had it made you know I had money you know I could go anywhere I wanted to go do what I wanted to do buy what I wanted to buy you know it was a whole lot of things and it was fun right I, I'm being honest am I talking to somebody today alright All right. And now that I've given my life to Christ, ooh, all hell has Come on. broken loose. Come on. All hell. You know, and I'm like, you know what, I don't like this. God, you didn't tell me the rules ahead of time. That when you said, I say, use me, <laughs> you was going to stretch me? Hello. Okay, Hello. what's up with that? Okay, next time, can I get a contract? Okay, <laughs> if you gave me a contract, can I see the fine print? Okay, so I can decide, okay, I want that clause, change that clause. Can we negotiate that one? Yeah. Okay. Come on. But that doesn't happen, you know, when you decide to give your life to Christ. Yeah. So God showed me here in um, 1 Corinthians 4, 10 to 20, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are prudent in Christ. We are weak, but we are but ye are strong, ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are ill-clad and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being revived, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer in it. Let me say that again. Being persecuted, we suffer in it. Being blasphemed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of this world and are the offscoffering of all things unto this day. I do not write these things to shame you, but to warn you as to my beloved sons. 
All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this is the context where I'm coming from. So my thing is, before somebody gave me the right hand of fellowship or say you're a Christian or say, you know what, let's confess with your tongue and, and everything, they should have gave me this. <laughs> All right? They should say, because this is the contract right here, basically telling us what we're going to go through. What we are going to go through. And then if we had it ahead of time, it was like, let me go back to, I'm going to be persecuted? I'm going to be blasphemed? Do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do this for God? Do I really want to lose everything like Job? Come on. Do I really want to do this? And it's a little bit easy here in the United States for the most part, but what about our brothers and sisters in other countries? Come on. Do they really want to do this and be thrown into jail? Do they really want to do this and lose their life? Do you really want to be a fool for God? What I really think about it is sometimes they said in the past, can you handle the heat? You know, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. And some days I want to get out of the kitchen. You know, and I believe Pastor a couple of weeks ago may have thought about getting out of the kitchen. You know, being a little bit frustrated, discouraged. You know, waiting on the promises of God, trying to speak life into us Sunday after Sunday, trying to come in here and keep the doors open of the revival center. Come on. That gets tiring. Yes. That gets weary. Or the fact that I am waiting for my miracle, my blessing, the healing that they said is going to happen. I'm waiting for that check. They said it's going to come in the mail. Yes. When is it going to come? I've been going to the mailbox. Open it. Um, bill. Bill. Advertisement. Wrong address. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me do this again. Bill. Bill. Advertisement. Okay. And you keep going back and forth till after a while you don't even look at the mail anymore. Come on. Because you don't want to be disappointed. You don't want to be discouraged. You know, and sometimes you just want to say, what's up, God? Yep. Where are you? You know, we sang about it. He will never leave us or forsake us. But sometimes I think I'm all alone. I'm all alone. And if you're like me, but I can only talk about me, there are times that I just get up in my house or sit in the dark, and I'm just crying. And I'm crying out to God and saying, come on now. I'm your child. You said I'm the heir to your throne. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Amen. Why are you Amen. taking so long? You said I am the first and not the last. I'm the head and not the tail. Uh -huh. You know, I'm Amen. standing on your promises, so come on now. And if you go to the Psalms, David had this conversation with God a lot of the times. He said, my enemies are coming to get me. Yeah. He said, make yeah. haste. Yeah. That's what David said, make haste. So there are days that I say, God, make haste. So let me tell you just a little bit how I talk to him. Just like I said, I said, Lord, before I preach here, I want you, if it's within your will, to give me something to say. So sometimes you've got to speak it to God and tell him what your desires of your heart. All right. It's the same thing about being in ministry. Now, I have a lot of degrees, and I'm not trying to brag or boast. But I told him, I told God, my father, I said, if you want me to do this ministry thing, you know, because I was a motivational speaker. I wasn't a minister. I wasn't an evangelist. This ministry thing, that's what I called it. Well, then you're going to have to teach me because I'm not going to school anymore. Okay? So I asked God for spiritual eyes for spir and spiritual ears. And I said, I need to understand the Bible like they did in the, back in the day. You said that. You taught them. You taught the disciples. I don't see them going to a school. And I'm not 
going against anybody's school or anything like that, but this is what I ask God for. And he says, okay, I'll make it happen. All right? Now, I don't get everything I ask for. For some things I do. All right? And that's what I'm telling you to do sometimes. Go to God and just be bold about it. Get it in his face Amen. and say, what's up, God? Amen. What's up? Yeah. What's going on? I need an answer from you. Okay, so let me tell you about some people in the Bible that were a fool for God. One of these people, and I love him to death, is Noah. Noah was an old man. I know he was over 400 years old when God told him that he had to build an ark. All right, so there was no rain. It was probably like here in uh, California. You know, no disrespect or anything like that. But no rain or anything like that. He's an old man, and God says to build an ark. Now, if you read the commentaries, it said it may have taken him 120 years. Some say it may have taken 50 to 70 years. However, during the time frame, what they're talking about really is that that's the time that God was trying to get the people to repent. Yes. He gave them a long period of time to turn from their wicked ways and turn back to him. In the interim, however, he talked to Noah, and he said, Noah, build that heart. So let's say it took him 50 years. For 50 years, he is building an ark. And I know his friends and probably his family members and his boss, if he had one, it's like, what are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? It's not raining. What is this boat? You know, they didn't take cruises back then. They used a boat to fish. This big old monstrosity of a thing. All right? And then as it was getting closer, he's getting animals and snakes and dogs and cats and giraffes. He must have looked foolish. Don't you believe that? But Noah did what God told him to do. He was obedient to God. And that's what I'm telling you to do. Even though you look like a fool, okay? Be a fool for God. Be a fool for God. All right? Because in his foolishness, he gained so much while everybody else lost everything. He and his family were saved. So if your family members are talking about you, about how many times you're going up to the revival center, how many times you're praying, yes. all right, how many times you're fasting, Come why on. you're tithing, and everything like that, just tell them, I'm a fool for God, and I'm trying to save you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay? Come on now. That's all you got to do. You don't really have to explain it too much more than that. I'm yes. trying to save you all. I'm trying to break that generational curse. Yes. Yes. Amen. All right, then. Let me tell you another fool that they had in the Bible. And she's really not a fool, but I need some men. So, Lou, I need you to get up, please. And I want um, Nick to get up, please. And Pastor, could you get up, please? Because uh, we're going to illustrate this a little bit. So, I need you to stand kind of over here. I, um, you're like protecting pastor, all right? You're protecting pastor, so, all right, so you're going to be, no, you got to go, you right here, you come over this way, all right, right here, and right here, you're protecting pastor, but you give me a little bit of space, all right, just a little bit right here. So there was a lady with an issue of blood, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so back then, first of all, she was foolish enough to be outside when she wasn't supposed to be outside, right? Isn't that correct? That's what the story says, right? And so I believe in my mind that she was short like me. And she's trying to get to the master, and she's jumping up, and she's saying, okay, there's a crowd of people. There's a crowd of people. I'm trying to get to him. How am I going to get to touch the hem of his garment? Okay, how am I going to do this? All right, I think she started out and she started crawling to him. Okay. And she started crawling Amen. and she's trying to get through the people that are in her way because she's short and she's trying to get to him and everything like that. And then to the end, she just gets over here and she just reaches out and touches him. Yeah. <laughs> reaches out because the disciples don't want her to, her to get to him. And that's what she, and she just touched the hem, like the hem of Pastor's right here, the hem, all right, not just, just to touch the hem, 
she is now healed. Ooh, she is now healed. Sometimes you gotta push your way through, jump your way through, block everybody out of the way and say, I need to get yes. to that point of contact, just like Pastor was talking about. Amen. All right, to get to my blessing, to get to my healing. So sometimes you may have to fast for three days, and it may be ten days, and it may be a month. Whatever it takes to get to your blessings from God. Amen. All right, no that what anybody is trying to do to block you from that blessing. And then when you get there, yes. it's just like when you're running a race and you have to get to the baton. You stretch your hand out and you touch God. Because when I just touch him, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to get my blessing. Yes, Lord. All right. So the other fool that I like, all right, and I'm not trying to offend anyone like this or anything like this, but David. Yes. Yes. King yes, David, King David. So let's pretend that I have some uh, royal robes on. Uh, all right. And he sees the Ark of the Covenant coming. Come on, now. And he's getting happy. So I got to take this off for a second. I'm so sorry. So he sees it coming. And he gets out of his garments and everything. And he humbles himself in front of God. So he's dressed like, see, in the Bible it says David got naked. Mm -hmm. Alright? But really he didn't get naked. He humbled himself, meaning he took off his priestly, his kingly clothing, and he became like a servant everybody else, and he started dancing and praising God. Yeah. Because the ark was coming back into the city and he danced 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 and he danced. Hallelujah. Yes, and he danced. And he danced and he danced. But you know what? Sometimes us women, we just say the wrong thing. I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes we just do the, we see our man doing the right thing, worshiping God, going to work, doing everything that he's supposed to do, but it's not the way we want it to be done. <laughs> yes, so this girl says, what is you doing out there, humbling yourself, being like one of those common people? You know, don't you know you a king? And I'm a queen, because you're the king? You made me look bad. <laughs> Okay, and that was basically what it was all about. It was her position, not the position of God. All right? You know, so us wives or, you know, mothers, we have to know our place. That's right. And we have to support our headship. Yes. All right? We have to support our headship. We have to support. He may look super crazy. You know, we move something to the left, he move it to the right. Just let it go. <laughs> I'm trying to say, I'm trying to save somebody's marriage today. <laughs> okay, just let it go. All right? Because while David gained everything, his wife lost everything. Meaning she lost her husband, and she also lost the ability to have children. Okay? Yeah. All right. So allow that man to do what God has called him to do. Yes. Amen. All right. Amen. Allow him to be the man that Amen. God wants him to be. Amen. Now, if there is something that is wrong, that you think that is wrong, I would just say go to God and let God handle him. God made the man. Yes. He had the blueprints. He can change him a little bit, you know, but he's going to mold him and make him yes. and shake him. Amen. All right? And you don't have to do anything. Amen. So I want to leave you with four important, important points when we talk about being a fool for God. The first one is it requires action. Hallelujah. All right. Ooh, hold on, sorry. Let's back up, because you remember my context, so I apologize. The first one really is, it requires no discussion. Well. No discussion, no discussion. So 
how God showed this to me was, remember when Peter and the disciples were in the boat? Mm -hmm. And Peter saw Jesus on the water, yes. and he said, I want to go come to you. Peter didn't talk to the rest of the disciples. That's right. <laughs> right all right, he yeah. said, God, I just want to be where you are. Dumb. And God said, or Jesus said, come. And Peter did. He didn't talk to anybody about it. He just did it. Alan, now, yes, he Alan. lost his focus, and that's when he sank. But as long as his, he had his eyes on God, he was walking on that water. Right. Don't you Amen. want to walk on the water? Amen. Amen. Don't you right want now. to be able to walk on the water? Yes. Yes. When God Amen. says, come, just come. Don't talk to anybody about it. And he also made it more plain to me. You see, Joseph had to go through what he had to go through. But I believe that it could have been prevented if he would have kept his mouth closed when he had his dreams. He talked to his brothers about it. And they tried to kill his dreams. Be Amen. careful who you talk to when God gives you Amen. something to say. Amen. Okay? Yes. Be careful who because not everybody that's cheering for you Amen. is really cheering for you. Alright? Right? They're Amen. waiting for you to fall. Alright? So there's no dis discussion. The second one, it requires action. Yes. Amen. It requires action. Just like I talked about Peter. He went. He went. He went. He went. What really came to mind when I was talking about this with God was Abraham and Isaac. That's action. That is action. He listened to God and he took his son the son that he had been waiting for his entire life. The son that he had at the age of 100. That's action. And his foolish faith, I'm going to say it again, his foolish faith got that son <coughs> on that altar to sacrifice his son to God. Wow. What if God told you today those of you that have children or have nieces or nephews, and God told you, you know what? You need to take that child, you have to take that grandchild and surrender it back to me. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do that? Mm. <laughs> Are you able? That's action. Because see, we try to pick and choose Come on, that's right. Come the on, things that's right. that we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. We try to pick and choose, but God is not telling us to pick and choose. He requires us to have action. Action. No matter the price, no matter the consequence, no matter the circumstance, just act. And when you act in obedience to him, I believe there's always a ram in the bush. Amen. 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 The third one, it requires sacrifice. Oh, boy. It requires sacrifice. And we sung about it earlier. I mean, all of the songs just minister to me and they're just right on point. You know, because we got to bow down before God. Yes. This is my story. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to bow down. But what does that mean? We have to surrender our hearts our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, our ego, our family, Amen. our children, Amen. our money. Amen. Everything that we have that God has given to us, we give it back to Amen. him Amen. and then some. Yes. We sacrifice everything to him. Yes. Everything. And that's surrender. And that's total submission. Amen. Total submission. Total, yeah. and I'm saying this because I'm talking to myself. Total submission. It's not about I at all. Charmaine can't do nothing. Yes. I cannot do nothing at all. But with God, I can do everything. Amen. Yes. Amen. And it's the same with everyone that's here right now. The last thing, being a fool for God 
requires persistence. Yes. Yep. Okay. It's persistence. Man. I believe Pastor talked about waiting over 40 years on the promises of God. 40 years. I can't even wait six months. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. I'm like, dude, really? Come on now. Yeah. All right? I'm being honest. You know, I'm one of those, you know, kind of special children. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about me. I'm like, okay, come on now. All right. You said about this faith of a mustard seed. And then he shows me back in the Bible. Come on. How the people waited. Job had to wait. Yes. You know, because we read um, different things in the Bible, and you, we think that it happens overnight. But it doesn't. We have to wait. And we have to believe, and we have to trust, and we have to depend, and we have to call out on God. And when it gets hard, I stand on this. I count it all joy. Yes. Yes. The joy Amen. of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And because he is my strength, I can withstand the storm. Amen. So, Sarah Kate, as I close, could you play Dance Like David Dance? Can you do that? Uh, okay, can you play something? Yes, okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, yes. What God has put on my heart tonight is that if there's anyone that is struggling with their faith, I ask that they come to the altar tonight for prayer. If you think that you're a fool for God, but you think that you're actually being an idiot, or somebody's calling you stupid, and I'm, I apologize for using those words, but that's what we think about when we hear the word fool. But if you really want to be a fool for God, if you really want to develop your faith, if you really want to have the patience of Job, if you want to have the patience of our pastor who has been waiting on the Lord for over 40 years, I ask you to come to the altar tonight. I ask you to surrender yourself and submit yourself to God because I believe as you come to the altar tonight, he has a healing for you just as he did for the woman with the issue of blood that she made that step, that one step out to him, that she, as a result of touching the that him of yes. his garment, she was healed. I believe that if we make that one step tonight, your situation is going to be healed. Your finances are going to be healed. Praise the God. job that you're maybe yeah. looking for is going to be healed. Your family situation is going to be healed. Any doubts that you may have in your mind may be healed. So as Sarah King plays right now, I just ask you is to listen to the virgins of God. <laughs> Our vision is that your life will be enriched by the teaching of the Word of God and experience victory in your life. We once again invite you to attend the Revival Center at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California. Worship services are Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information, go to alphabeth.org.
somebody here that's been watching this. God is calling you and bringing you back home. You run, you hit him. God knows where you're at. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come back in my heart. I repent. I need you. I'm not going to run anyway, anymore. I'm going to start running towards you. Somebody here, you need to hear this. This is a day that God is getting ready to change your life. And if we at the Revival Center, we, we're here. We want to help you. We got plenty of people that we can uh, get back to you and, and they will pray with you and pray for you, <coughs> encourage you. And you're more than welcome to call us here at the Revival Center at area code 805-434-5170. It's 805-434-5170. Or you can email us at alphabeth, A-L-P-H-A-B-E-T-H, at tcsn.net. We love you. As, as I pray for those in this room, I pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, the next few minutes I pray that you're going to revolutionize our life. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us, as well as to these that watch us by way of video. God, as we look at the signs of the times, we can tell that Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Bless, Lord God, this time that we spend together right now. In Jesus' name.